Okay, so we're talking about thermal curling, okay? So when we do thermal curling, <clears throat> we always have to consider our curl size that we want, okay? Um, you can do them vertically, you can do them horizontally, okay? Um, it doesn't matter. Mostly we're going to be typically doing um, spiral curls, so we'll want them the base to be vertical, okay? So same thing was with our round brushes. We've been using round brushes. We have three different sizes here in diameter, right? So our base for our round brushing is the size of our diameter of whichever brush we decide to use, correct? So same thing with our curling irons, okay? So here is a one inch, here is a one and a quarter maybe, or this might be three quarters, this might be an inch, okay? So you can see, but you can clearly see the different diameters of, you know, the barrels, correct? So obviously one's gonna be a tighter curl than the other, right? So depending on what you're trying to achieve, maybe you wanna use a really tiny curl or a bigger one, some, you know, you might get a two inch barrel. So whatever you decide to use, your base has to match your barrel size, okay? So <clears throat> when I come in here and make my base, same thing as round brushing, I'm gonna start in the back, I'm gonna start in the nape, okay? And I'm gonna do mine vertically, so I'm gonna want my base to be long and skinny, okay? You don't ever want to go more than three inches long on your base just because you want to get a nice even curl pattern. And you want it to be consistent throughout the entire head. <clears throat> so I'm going to make sure then to use that same consistent base all over the entire head. So <clears throat> typically what you're going to do is divide this down the middle. This side is going to go, you're going to curl it back this way. This side, you'll curl it back this way. Okay. Now that's not to say that you can't alternate the curls and have, you know, different things. I'm just telling you for the most part, that's what you're going to do. Okay. So let's start on the right side. So you can see that my base is going to actually be a rectangle the size of my barrel okay and I'm using a pretty small barrel here so y'all can see what I'm talking about if I was gonna do a full head of this and I was gonna she's gonna do a photo shoot or she's gonna do wedding hair you know whatever I'm gonna use a one finishing spray like a setting spray before and then I'm gonna do another one after okay um, I'll even sometimes I will even do an entire row of um, like I'll clip them into place also and that way if she's <clears throat> typically weddings you know you're gonna you're gonna have your bride that you curl and then She's gonna get her makeup done, she's gonna get her dress on, you're gonna do everything. The last thing I do is take these curls out, okay? And then, depending on her hair, obviously, if she's gonna wear it up or something crazy with a ton of hairspray, then that's one thing. I typically would like... Okay, so typically what I would do is, um, you know, unless she's gonna have an updo, I like loose curls, so I'll pin up my curls for the wedding. And then typically for the reception, we can take it down and comb through it and she can have big wavy curls for the reception. That's usually what I recommend. Um, and then depending on the hairspray you use, obviously you don't want it to be so bad that they can't even brush through it that day, you know. But you can clearly see, right, my rectangular base that is the same size as my barrel. So it's not longer than my barrel and it's not wider than my barrel okay so we are literally going to do every single inch of this mannequin's head 
and it is going to be, I'm doing vertical ones. So remember when we talked about zone one, two, and three? You can see clearly this mannequin has bleached ends. So I'm never just going to grab this end. This is a 400 degree iron also. Okay. So I'm never going to grab the end and then wind it all up because I'm going to burn these ends. So we're always going to do zone one first. So when I grab it, I'm grabbing it at the base. I'm smoothing that hair out one time. <clears throat> I'm also establishing my base. So right now, I'm getting all that hair nice and smooth, okay? Then I am gonna grab that zone one and I'm gonna wind it in and I'm gonna hold it there for a second, okay? If you're worried about it, you can put your comb here so that you don't burn your person. And I do this about maybe eight to 10 seconds, and then I'm opening this up a little bit, grabbing that hair again, and now I'm wrapping it all the way back up. So I started in zone one, now I'm zone two. Now I'm just inching these ends there, and that's just gonna be like three seconds, and let it go, okay? So this is <clears throat> when I would either get a clip and clip this in place right here so it sets, because it's burning hot right now. So it's better to get a clip and let it set, um, or you know just spray it right away. Okay. But you can see I have an even curl from start to finish. Okay. It's not a big wave into this tiny little bitty corkscrew down here okay so here's my spiral okay so think about your shell your clamp your barrel okay this doesn't hold itself you have to hold it okay so when I get this hair I'm gonna go to my next section and remember you're always working from the center out from the bottom up so I'm not disturbing anything I just did Okay, I'm gonna do my next curl. I'm not even gonna to touch this. Okay, I'm gonna work my way up. I'm not gonna to touch anything below here. That way I know I've gotten every hair. I haven't left anything out. It's gonna have a consistent curl pattern over the entire head, okay? And I'm gonna work my way up into the front and then think about what I'm gonna do around her face, okay? Okay, so my next little slice here, same thing. It's gonna be the size of my barrel. I should clearly be able to see a rectangle. Now, when we go to do horizontal, it becomes a little more important. So I'm grabbing that zone one, smoothing it out from the base all the way through the ends. And I'm holding, this is, you're going to have to get used to this, okay? holding this in and I'm squeezing it tight because it's not going to shut on its own. I have to hold it closed. And I'm just opening and closing just a little bit at a time. And I'm letting these ends in. Of course, depending on how fried they are, they may only need a second and then they're done. So I hold it on that zone one a lot longer, right? So you can see they're almost identical curls. So that's what's gonna happen throughout the whole head, okay? Okay, so now let's say I want to do some horizontal curls, okay? If you're gonna do horizontal, you have to worry a little bit more about your base, okay? So your base is basically You have to think of volume, okay? So when I create my base here, same thing as my round brush. I'm not gonna go through all this trouble to round brush, but then pull it down, right? Because then my base is gonna be very flat, correct? So if I want volume, I'm either gonna pull it out towards me or I'm gonna push it away from me. So I'm really lifting up that hair follicle, right? That root. So same thing with my 
with my um, curling iron, I'm not gonna go through all this trouble to get volume at the top of her head, but then pull it flat down here at my base, okay? So what we call that is placement. So you're either going to have an off base placement, which means I'm pulling it down past my base, or I'm gonna do an on base placement, which I'm pulling it straight up, or if I'm going past my base and pushing it away from me, then I'm going to have, I'm sorry, on base placement. So it's on, half off, and off, okay? So what happens when I roll this all down? You'll see. So if I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna use a cold iron so I don't actually curl it, but if I'm gonna do a um, off base placement, when I go to roll this all up, then my barrel is not on the base. You see that? And if you need to come over here, you can come over here, okay? When I pull it up, then when I roll it back down, it's gonna be half off. So you can see my curl here is half on and half off of my base. If I'm pushing this away from me and curling it down, it's gonna end up right on the base. So my on base curls are gonna be what gives me the most volume right and I'm pushing that hair away from me okay so <clears throat> I think this is more important obviously when you're doing horizontal than if I'm doing vertical because vertical I'm just gonna be here you know the only thing that matters is how I'm crimping this hair at the base so I would still you know be careful to over direct and do an on base placement vertically just so I have some volume here okay but like I said, that you don't want, in the nape area, it's not so important. You could do some off base placements. Um, as you get higher, obviously we want volume, so I'm gonna be doing on base placement. Okay, following me? Okay, cool. All right, so, other than that, this week's assignment is just to do that, you want to to do the entire head. I don't care if you want to do it vertically or horizontally, that's entirely up to you. Okay, I just want to see that in the end, you have done, you know, all your curls. You're gonna do the entire head. And you are going to create those bases to where you have a clean rectangle You've combed it, you've smoothed it out, you're doing your zone one, wrapping that in, inching it back, and then let it go. Okay. So again, think about the direction of the hair when you place your uh, barrel in there. You have this hard line here. So if I grab this hair and I go backwards, obviously I'm gonna have a nasty crimp there now, see? And that's super hard to get rid of. So make sure when you're doing this, look at it and think how is that hair gonna wrap around without getting crimped against this thing? and that's the right direction. Over here, when I'm done with my right side, I'm gonna to go to my left. So that's gonna be a lot more, um, it's just gonna be challenging because you're gonna to have to think about, okay, now I've gotta to go the opposite way because I want these curls to go back this way now, right? So now, When I place this section, I can't grab it this way. I've got to grab it this way. Curl it in this way.
see. So now you can see this side is going to go back this way. This side is going to come back this way. Are you with me? Yeah? Okay. And you'll get the hang of it. It's not going to be easy at first. It is very challenging to keep this barrel vertical, first of all, and then open and close your shell without um, letting go of it. You have to keep it all together. You have to apply pressure. I'm squeezing this together and I'm inching those ends in little by little. So I have these ends in here and then I let it go. So I don't want you to form a vertical base and then get lazy and hold it diagonally, okay? Or hold it horizontally, all right? If you're gonna do that, just do horizontal. <laughs> but it is harder to keep this straight. But that's how you're really going to get a true uniform curl and it's going to be spiral, okay? So make sure when you do this, you're keeping it vertical. Now, I would spray all of this. I'll go ahead and spray it. And move on to my next section. And like I said, you don't... Um, Once you spray it, it's pretty hard to mess with it. I mean, you can really, you'd have to really go out of your way to get in here. I'm gonna go up again, three inches. Can I go to the restroom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna come back in here. Start in the center and work my way from the center out to the right. And so just like my round brushing, I should not disturb anything underneath me. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back in, do my next section. That way you know you've gotten every single inch of this person's head. You're gonna, everybody that says, oh, my hair goes flat, it won't take a curl. It's because your stylist isn't doing one inch subsections, okay? So she's grabbing big chunks of hair and just curling the ends. That's why it doesn't stay. If you will do it this way, it will stay, okay? And you use a good iron, you use a good hairspray, you take your tiny subsection. See, if I wanted to, like, you know, use a bigger iron, I could, but it's going to be more of a wave than a curl. Okay, these curls are going to last me. I can pin them up all different ways. When she takes it down, it's going to be a nice big wave, and it's going to look really cool. So you can just, um, but it lasts. This set will last. And the hardest part is going to get used to this barrel. This uh, clamp, holding this clamp is what's going to be the most difficult. And then just remember, you're, you're just doing one hand. I, I can't touch this because this is fire engine hot right here, okay? Easy? <laughs> yes, it's easy. I remember when I first opened the kit, I saw that in there, and I saw what how it was, right? I thought it was broken at first, so how the heck are you supposed to use it? Yep. Well, um, like I said, it just allows the hair to get evenly across the entire barrel. 
you're putting the pressure, you're holding that clamp together. Um, this is also extremely difficult for someone to do to themselves. Okay? We don't want them to be able to do, do it themselves because what are they paying us for then, right? This is why, you know, we can go do wedding hair and charge, you know, charge for it because these curls are gonna last, they're gonna look beautiful, it's not gonna fall. You know, it's not something her little sister can do. <laughs> it's a professional style. Doesn't that look pretty? And then when you let it cool and you comb it out, it's really pretty. All I do is tell them if they want to um, comb it out, use a wide tooth comb for their fingers. And it's really pretty. It becomes that big wave. And then of course you could alternate rows you could do every other one a different direction. It doesn't matter. You know, I like, um, typically this is what I do. I do them all back. Of course, the longer the hair, the more difficult it's gonna be. hairspray it won't feel hard and crunchy and nasty it also won't flake on you like a lot of cheap hairsprays will flake on you and literally you can see the product in the hair this one doesn't do that so when you're ready and she's you know ready to go or whatever and you just use a wide tooth comb then you can pull this all out And you can leave it big, you can leave it individual. Most times I just tell people just barely run a comb through it or use your fingers. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. So I want everybody to do this a full set this week. Okay. Okay.